أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم So I was saying bro like uh, when he accepted uh, when Adam alayhi salam ex- uh, I mean was uh, was awed by that uh, by that uh, lifestyle by that illusion then he he became naked right it shows that there is a connection between being naked and that lifestyle because ultimately with that lifestyle comes loss of shame and a tendency for uh, unlawful or uh, unlawful or fake sexual sexual uh, desire sexual uh, sexual activity so what do you think of this yeah maybe we we we, we could link with the we with that you know sheikh iman say explained about the people and the, that beautiful expression explanation from the quran about the people who are cast to become monkeys like apes. yeah like apes yeah. because an ape can do that sexual intercourse with her mate or with, with his mate and there is nothing shameful to them because it is their fitra that is their nature you cannot blame them for that they can walk in public naked you cannot blame them for that but we as human beings because we were created we were honored by allah above all creations and we were given clothes in order to cover up ourselves so once we start taking off them little by little one after one you will see now the the limits for women women used to cover up themselves this is this has nothing to do with islam this is not only about islam this is about the nature the nature that women used to do cover up themselves Yeah. it's not some it does it has it it does it doesn't have anything to do with that christianity maybe Christ, in christianity it permits women to 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 lose up or maybe to to uncover themselves no it has none, none of the religions per, permit um, women to dress immodestly every religion women till the early 1950s 1940s were even, covered, even in ankosam used to dress modestly it is only in the last last uh, 50 or 80 years that uh, we see complete degeneracy and loss of shame even amongst muslim women by the way yep. yes yes of course so after that that's why as a the beautiful expression of sheikh iman that these people were not turned into monkeys or apes but indeed they were cursed to live like apes and Despite. that also that also shows uh, they will become like monkeys not just in terms of losing shame it also has to do with loss of intellect intellection because to behave like that you sh- you already should be stupid enough to behave like that so it shows that you are, you are ugly Your uncle is sub- your, your uncle is suppressed. We, That's why yes. you see all these people a majority of people 99 out of 100 they are completely hypnotized and operating in a hive mind like they have completely stopped thinking for themselves and they believe whatever is told to them like whatever their government or leaders tell them they say get the fifth shot fifth dose they will get the fifth dose they say uh, to to get a house you have to sell your soul and you know sell your soul to the bank they will do so it's just complete loss of intellection even though they're muslims they're christians they pray but here it's, it's zero it's the same thing and we know same we know, we know why the angels and the uh, were uh, were told to prostrate to adam because of this because we have intelligence we have aql if you don't use this you're you're not human you're even you're just like a monkey worse than cat yes. yes that's it so yeah it indeed what you said earlier is that it it was something connected with the act of going naked and by after approaching the tree it had something to do with this yes. the the losing the that spirituality yeah 
and and of course after that uh, another beautiful expression some questions would, would come then if you are telling us it was a worldly garden and we say that it was a heavenly garden and someone come maybe with the proof that Allah told them minha jamia or he said ihbitu minha jamia ba'dukum bi ba'din adu descend down all of you enemy one after another Allah used use the terminology ihbitu descend down yeah this is the question i asked you initially so Allah said descend down right but you told me that the word that was used was not nazal which would have said which would have literally meant sending down but it was ihbitu so can you explain that the word ihbit which means descend or or we could say inzil means also descending now or descend now we created a, a hypothesis that those who those who hold the view maybe they were contradicted at this by this terminology descending when allah said descending because it had to be a heavenly garden and when he said after they had approached the tree he told them descend down both of you or all of you enemy to one another and then here comes a, a by my my guidance whoever follows my guide, guidance will live in peace so now maybe and and under this at this context they hold the view that it was a heavenly garden by saying descent but we explained it in another way but not every word in the quran that that says descend actually means a descendant descending from heaven or a descent from heaven no not everything is heavenly descent there are some point whereby we have a descending in this material world maybe it was an elevated place a mountain or somewhere now you are told to descend we'll use the, the on the same arabic word ihbit where do we have the reference in the quran allah told the story of no you know when the people were drowned all the nation of no what was drowned except the few who were who, who had seek refuge in the in the ark at the time now after the the calamity had passed away allah now told prophet nuh alayhi salam he told him ba'dahu billahi minash shaitanir rajim qala ya nuh he called him ya o oh, nuh ihbit bisalamin minna he used the word ihbit bisalamin minna wa barakatin alayk because the, the the you know the ark was somewhere elevated yeah. and the drown has already swept out everything because at the first time he told them irqabu mi fiha bismillah majraha wa mursa at the first time they were they were getting into the into the ark <laughs> now now at the yarhamuk allah now at this point now the after the calamity has already passed allah tells him tells him now descend with peace from us and blessings upon you descend down it means he was in the ark at that time and the ark was somewhere elevated so they are descending but they are still in this material world and also another reference in the quran surah al baqarah where by the children of israel they they were bored they said that we are bored this the same kind of food that we are eating every day mm-hmm. why oh moses why should you not ask to your lord god to allow us to gush forth from the earth to grow for ourselves mm-hmm. from the earth Mm. the vegetables the onions the cucumbers and whatsoever we are tired of the same type of food that we have to eat every day mm. then the terminology came an explanation in the quran it said 
ihbiku misra fa inna lakum ma sa'alta ma sa'altu he sent to miss you will get what you ask so they 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 they, they wished for something which was not better than the one which they had previously so yeah. allah said to them ihbitu misra he sent to miss fa in lakum ma saaltum you will get what you want so the terminology that was used was still the same descending mm-hmm. now when we go back to the story of adam and eve after they had approached the tree and allah said ihbitu ba'dukum li ba'dhin adu descend when some and enemies to others it 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 had nothing to do with an heavenly descent yeah because it was a a, a worldly garden garden and it was it means it was somewhere eleva- elevated maybe at the mountain side yeah because the prophet said that in order to preserve the faith in the end times one may have to move to the mountain side a place mm. where rain falls now after he has he wants to separate himself from the natural way of life now Allah tells him descend down you and your wife so it was not a heavenly descent that's the 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 foundation that we have built upon those verses in the Quran so far so the word ihdib is not uh, it does not literally mean like uh, Uh, falling like from heaven to earth yeah. or something like that it means like going from a place of uh, elevation elevation to a place of uh, uh, to 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 like a lower trajectory but it can also mean like uh, embarking on some mission from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right like prophet no he was set with the mission of building the ark so the word ihbit was used yeah after the calamity had passed and the you know they they are saying that the the ark settled on top of a mountain yeah and the flood has already passed away now allah mm-hmm. tells him then with peace from us and blessings upon you so he uses the terminology descend and the children of israel they were told to descend to miss like go to miss spread out to miss where you want you will get what you want mm. because you have desired for what is not better than what you had previously so yeah. descending means like to like you know in the quran the the gogen magog wa kullu min hada wa wa hum min kulli hada bin yansilu it spread out in all direction they are coming down Hmm. So he meant does not has to do with coming from heaven but it was in reference with a worldly descending. So like uh, uh when you said uh, you we did not speak about the mastermind Dajjal we only spoke about Iblis. It's that I had a hypothesis that since every prophet warned their ummah of the Dajjal that means there was always the threat of the dajjal in every single ummah the dajjal represented a fitna which was kind of out of the imagination of people and every prophet felt their duty to warn their own ummah of the dajjal it shows that every prophet had foresight or intimate knowledge of what the fitna of dajjal is so my hypothesis was based on this that every prophet had in their life an encounter with the dajjal like a flash encounter or a flash point encounter so i based my hypothesis t- hypothesis like when sheikh imran hussein was saying when suleiman alayhi salam saw the jasad sitting on his throne for suleiman alayhi salam that was his interaction with the dajjal it was a flash flash interaction with the dajjal a flash point 
when he saw the Dajjal sitting on his throne. That represented the fitna of the Dajjal to Sulaiman So for Musa salam, it was the Samiri who created who, uh, who created the uh, the just uh, who created the jasad the the cow right the the fake the fake uh, fake idol. So for Sulaiman it uh, the Dajjal represented someone usurping his throne or encapsulating his throne. And we know that Dajjal will rule from Jerusalem. So it's kind of a manifestation. For Musa salam, the Dajjal represented, uh, represented transhumanism because uh, the, the Bani Israel, they created the Samiri. He created something which did not have life in it, but it seemed as if it had life. It, it, produ it, it produces sound. It produces sound. So it did not have life. Uh, so... So, but for the Bani Israel, it was something like it was animated. So they started worshipping it. So in Musa Salam's time, you could say that the Samiri represented the Dajjal, but the fitna was the fitna of transhumanism. And in Sulaiman uh, time, in his life, the fitna of Dajjal was the fitna of a usurper king, someone who would try to take his throne. So <coughs> similarly, in Adam Salam's time, it seems to me that this was the flashpoint of the Dajjal, where Iblis, Iblis showed Adam Salam this vision, this uh, these tall skyscrapers, this uh, way of life, modern Western civilization. And that was the manifest fitna in Adam Salam's time. So uh, for Adam Salam, that was his interaction with the Dajjalic fitna, and the fitna was basically this unnatural way of life. So what do you think of this? Yeah, it, could have, it could be there, <clears throat> there could be a, a connection in that. About Samiri, I think Sheikh, Sheikh Azewa. No, Sheikh uh, Imran has not uh, talked Kofun. about this, but some... Another sheikh, uh, 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 an, Arab, an Arabian sheikh, uh, talked about this. I will, I will send you some links to watch. Okay, he we could have, we could. he really gives we could good see. evidence that the Samiri represented the the job. In how, the how how can we link between the story there at Samiri, a jasad, a soulless body, producing sound, hmm. and as that's the achievement that they had, they had at that point. What about in our in in our time? Our time, we can take that reference to what we call Sophia. Sophia robot. Okay. Well, you know, yeah, she, I, I, she is a just that, a, that's why I said artificial intelligence. Yeah, in intelligence, most yeah. Because these yeah. they don't have a, they don't have the ruh, they don't have a consciousness, but they have yeah. a code in them. It allows yeah. to for them to make sound and speak yeah. and seem like they're sentient beings. So, yeah. There's a great connection in that yeah. because it's the same thing. They, we have the robots today, they're speaking to mankind. And what, uh, another lesson to draw there, the, uh, how was the Jal involved in that scenario, scenario between Satan and Adam alayhi salam, alayhi salam in that deception? How was he involved? You know that the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Jal will come with the river and the fire. Yeah. And he said, his river is a fire and his fire is the cool water, cool, is the cool water of a river. Mm. So he comes to deceive mankind. Mm. So it's like the real, the real Jannah, the real garden, is the one that is possessed in the hands of the judge. Hmm. And that, that means symbolizes the modernity, the modern, the, me, the mega cities, the smart cities. The fire. This is where the river, the fire. Exactly. That, the, the smart city is like a, 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 a beautiful genre compared to that one, which is in the countryside. Yeah. So we could say this is the deception of the judge, but indeed, what, what appears, the reality and appearance are opposite because it appears that it is a beautiful garden, 
but indeed what is found inside. First, it is built in the foundation of fire because it, can rot, it, it cannot work out without fire, yeah. which is if it, if it is. And also indeed, it is built in the foundation of fire, mean, meaning hell fire yeah. in the day of judgment because mm. what is located there is corruption, yeah. the decrease in morality. So yeah. it is a fire to, to Allah. But the countryside, it symbolizes fire because it is backward. It is outdated. It yeah. is primitive. Yeah. But indeed, it is Jannah to Allah because the morality, that, the moral yeah. way of life is still preserved. Preserved, yes. So there is a Ibilis, a combination of Ibilis and Dajjal were involved in this, in deceiving Adam. Yes, exactly. Exactly, my brother. Okay, brother. I think we've we've uh, uh, exhausted the topic for today. Alhamdulillah, and I think we've covered covered a lot of bases. So, would you like to end here, or would you like to just briefly summarize the entire topic, and then and then end? I think it uh, we could end up here. Yeah. So so far, to, what we have concluded is that the the garden of Adam and he of and Eve. Adam and Hawa was located here in the world and we have given evidence, much plenty evidence from the Quran. Mm. And we, we say that that garden in which Allah placed him was a beautiful natural garden in which Adam was supposed to be attached to the natural way of life because it is fitter. It is the way, it is how he was created. He was created from mud. So he had, he had to be attached at the off-grid but Iblis came to deceive him that this is not the, the proper way of life. We have to abandon this and, uh, and embrace modernity or the modern way of life and live, live away that way of life. Come to the mega city, come to the modern. We have the rural urban migration, come to the smart city because here we'll achieve eternity. We can achieve eternity meaning to bring about transhumanism. We can, we can achieve, we can combat death, and humans will live forever in the world with happiness. So Adam was tempted and that was seduced and he accepted, he desired for that. Hmm. And after doing that, by that act, it is a point which we have explained earlier that he approached the tree which was prohibited and that tree we said it was a, a symbolic tree. Hmm. And I think we have been very clear in that this way I want to summarize. Alhamdulillah. All right, my brother. Thank you. Thank you for, for this. And the great insight, mashallah. I hope people are convinced I, because I I, yeah. I, I pray that this we we are not priding ourselves or we are not getting ourselves to be maybe to proud ourselves that we have more knowledge than anyone. But what we have, what we want to say is that we have to to use the proper methodology in studying the Quran, to go to the complete, to the totality of the book. Do not take these verses in isolation. We have to go to the, to, to the totality of the book, gather all the verses and make sure that they, they connect to each other harmoniously without contradicting. Because unless we do this, we will end up with many contradictions that we had previously that how could he, one who has arrogance be permitted to enter into a heavenly garden when he had already shown guidance. And the Quran says that one with arrogance cannot enter into Jannah. Mm. So this is a very wake up, a very great wake up call to the Muslim world and even to the whole, to the to the whole mankind because it 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 it, it takes us back to the nature. Exactly, exactly, bro. And the solution is just in front of us to go back to nature, to go back to the mountainside, to go back to the initial garden. This, yeah. Inshallah. Inshallah, bro. And that is the only way to protect yourself from the Dajjal. Because it said, yeah. if you look at the Dajjal in the eye, no matter how guided you are, how much knowledge you have, just by looking at him, you will fall into his fitna. You, and he, you'll be deceived and he will come in all the cities, the cities, 
not the rural countryside or the mountains. He will come in the cities. Exception, exception of two cities only, Mecca and Medina. And we can already see uh, his, his, uh, his heaven and his, his river. That is the modern civilization that me, you, I, I think most people watching, we're, we're, we're trapped in this system. So inshallah, may Allah guide us and allow us may, to... May Allah take yeah. us out with this and yes. make us, help us to achieve <coughs> our, own, but our natural way of life. Yeah. Uh, All right, my brother. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان الشمس والقمر بحسبان والنجم والشجر يسجدان